Thank you. Okay, let's begin. Welcome to my weekly live market meeting, 18 September 2019. I'm Saganandi. I'm the designer and developer of Q Systems and Techniques. I used to work in IT. I retired about six, seven years ago. I work mostly in Singapore. Nowadays, I am living in Thailand. I primarily swing trade stocks, mostly in the USA market, but sometimes in other global markets as well. I regularly share my stock analysis and market analysis in the traders forum, sagarnandi.com. My Twitter page, twitter.com, sagarnandi, and also the YouTube channel, tradingprofitably.com. All of these forums, channels, pages are open to the public. Before I begin, let me go through the disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on the trading systems and techniques I use. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. In this session, as usual, I will do a global as well as USA market review and then using the live systems, try to look for trading opportunities. One thing to note is that there is a major event today at 2 p.m. Fed funds target rate Central Bank of America will announce their probably revised rate we don't know but probably revised that is considered a major event therefore using Q technique we would not like to enter a trade now before the announcement is made because we don't know in which direction the market will move Having said that, no harm in going through the analysis and look for trading opportunities so that we become more and more conversant with the workflow that we use. First of all, let me start with the global market analysis. Because I do this analysis every week, this is also a demonstration of discipline trading. That is one thing. Another is how is the analysis working out? If you are attending the webinar or watching the video later in the YouTube channel, you will come to know that the analysis is working pretty well. Why does it work well? It works quite well because of the simplicity of the technique. For the global markets, I have downloaded the data. So I can use that. We start with the Australian market index, AXJO. Because these are global markets, I am removing the relative performance. In the weekly chart, the backdrop candle color is remaining bullish. This week's candle shape so far is mixed. It has both upper as well as lower tail. However, the week is not over yet. Today is only Wednesday. In the daily chart, after displaying the bullish headwind, price went up. If you watch the previous live market meets, then you would know when price was at this level, I mentioned that the likely move of XGO from here was upward. That analysis came true. It went up, hit the upper boundary, went from lower boundary to upper boundary. Because it is close to the upper boundary, it is too extended for me to take any long trade. And there is no short trade setup. It is bullish, but I am not going to take any long trade right now. Next is China market using the CSI index.
in the weekly chart it came close to the memory resistance and decline the backdrop color is remaining bullish in the daily after displaying the bear release signal it declined little bit it is still close to the upper boundary level the weekly backdrop is bullish therefore we would like to take a bullish trade however it is too close to the upper boundary similar to axjo in the australia market so we are not going to take any trade right now hong kong market hsi hang seng index here also the weekly backdrop is bullish though the shape is bearish so far similar to the chinese index csi 300 after displaying the bear release signal it pulled back somewhat the weekly backdrop is bullish if the daily goes up from here we could consider taking a long trade go with flow trade following long setup however there are several memory resistances that will prevent us from attempting any long trade in hsi right now there is no short setup as well we are seeing that several of the markets don't have a trade setup when that happens individual stocks may also not give low risk trading opportunities let's say what is let's see what is true for the india's nifty index it was bearish in this area in the weekly chart after that for four weeks the weekly backdrop color has turned yellow price is moving sideways in the last live market meet i mentioned that it was inside a triangle pattern bound by this resistance memory and there was a support memory here which got broken yesterday therefore we are not going to take any long trade for sure if there is a low risk shorting opportunity you may look into that however we'll take that short trade only if we have one of the trade setups that is the weekly and daily charts are meeting the unambiguous checklists right now there is no such trade setup because the weekly is neutral if the weekly was magenta then this break down yesterday would have given us a go with flow trend following short setup but that didn't happen because the weekly was not magenta now there is no trade setup if price goes up little bit again and comes down and the weekly turns magenta at the same time that will give a optimal shorting point we may see if that opportunity comes long position holders may be cause us especially if this weekly memory is broken that has not broken yet the daily memory that was at this price level is broken the weekly is still holding if this is broken then long position holders may be extra careful none of the indices so far has any trade setup let's look at the FTSE market uk market FTSE index ftsc let me open from the local symbol here also the weekly backdrop color is bullish though the shape is bearish in the daily it is still going up with higher low higher high it is in an uptrend if the daily gives a cyan color candle that will be the optimal trading point the weekly is already bullish if i have a cyan color candle in the daily that will give a low risk go with low trend following long setup right now there is no trade setup let's look at the s p 500 and other us markets using etfs 
that is up to yesterday's market close. The weekly is bullish near watermark resistance level where bearish headwind came from where price dropped. Daily is also near watermark resistance. Weekly, not weekly, daily headwind had earlier led to price drop and now there is another bearish headwind signal. In the weekend market roundup, I mentioned that S&P 500 was bullish. However, it was too close to the watermark resistance. So I was not going to take any long trade. I'm maintaining the same view. It is too close to the upper boundary and watermark resistance to take any long trade right now. NASDAQ ETF QQQ. Similar picture, weekly is remaining bullish, very close to the previous watermark resistance, daily also near watermark resistance, where bearish headwind had come earlier from where price has had dropped. So I'm not going to look for any short trade. Sorry, I'm not going to look for any long trade right now. Even if the daily goes up today, gives a sand color candle, that will be too close to the watermark resistance and upper boundary level. That will make QQQ more bullish, but it will not give a low risk entry opportunity. You will see the same is true for DIA also. And I don't want to connect to the live data. During webinar, it's easier to work with the offline data. Same picture, weekly backdrop color is bullish, but very close to watermark resistance. Daily near watermark resistance, near upper boundary. Too extended for me to try any long trade now. IWM. Russell 2000 ETF. In the weekly market roundup, I mentioned that it was closing right at the memory resistance, both in daily and weekly. Looking at that, I mentioned I was certainly not going to take any long trade in spite of it being the best performer in that week. It had the most bullish shape and color candle and it had gone up, the only ETF that had gone up with heavy weekly activity, but because it closed right at the memory resistance in weekly and daily, instead of taking a long trade there, I would be happier if price came down from here and gave me a shorting opportunity. That would be a low risk shorting opportunity. That hasn't come, but I am not still ready to take any long trade in IWM. We saw none of the market indices starting from Australia to China to Hong Kong, India, UK, America. We don't have any trade setup in any of the broad indices. When that happens, usually it is not easy to find trade setup in the individual stocks also. Not easy, but it is possible. And let's try to find them out. I ran a series of explorer scan programs just before this webinar. I ran one looking for buy candidates in stocks that went up yesterday. I ran it on a list of 324 liquid stocks that also have liquid options in the USA market. So I'm going to get the data put it in Trade Finder. And I'm going to get the data of another scan I ran, that is short if down, stocks that went down yesterday from that same list of 324 liquid stocks. And I'm going to put it in the second tab. 
now it is easy to see how the possible bullish candidates and possible bearish candidates stacked up. The red column here is the cumulative number of bearish signals in the second tab where we pasted the bearish signal result. We can see 74 stocks gave possible bearish signal yesterday. What about the bullish? 57. If we look for last two days, then we have 72 bullish signals. Last two days, 94 bearish signals. Over five days, 128 bearish, 124 bullish. Over last two weeks, 142 bullish, 150 bearish. Pretty mixed picture. If the market is significantly bullish, then we would see finder one data that is the bullish scan result. These numbers would be much higher. And if the market was significantly bearish, then we would see these numbers to be much bigger. However, we can see they are more or less balanced between finder one and finder two. In finder one, I pasted the result from buy if up, and in finder two, I pasted the result from short if down. The results are mixed. That also shows that market is balanced. If I look at the sector performance, this is as of now, that means as of yesterday's market close, we saw, we can see yesterday two sectors were up, nine were down. Over five days, nine were up, to wear down. This is also keeping sideways market. It's not steadily going up or going down. Let's go back to the scan result and look for some trade there. we saw that market is at resistance level. However, it is bullish. It is not easy to look for a trade setup. It is bullish, difficult to look for a bearish trade, but to extend it to look for a bullish trade. Let's say that price is going to go up, break out of this watermark resistance. If that happens, then we are going to take a long trade and we may shortlist some long candidates. And if the market reverses from the watermark resistance, then we are going to take a short trade. So we may shortlist some shorting candidates as well. How to do that? We are going to look for the maximum number of bullish signals in long opportunities. One way to start with U-turn. And the first one immediately catches the eye, it has maximum number of red signals as of yesterday. U-turn, pressure, retracement. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the finder two. Let me, sorry, sorry, let me start again. Look at the finder one and CMG. That's, that's going to be a bullish signal stock. Chipotle Mexican Grill, it had a bullish U-turn, bullish pressure, gap, pull back to support, trend following, long trade setup. Five signals came yesterday. Blue color shows this week had a squeeze release and, yes, and previous week, yellow color, shows it had a memory support touch and also bounce up from there. Let's see how the chart looks. And I'm going to set the template to weekly daily, that is fine. So let me open the chart first. Here, one few days ago, previous week, it touched the, from the touched the memory support, bounced up from there. It came to the yellow direction line that is pulled back to support and went up from there. It has given a flow color bullish yesterday. That's a going flow signal. However, the weekly is magenta. So we don't have any 
trait setup it to apply the unambiguous checklist so i'm going to close this and delete cmg let's look at the stocks with bullish u-turn first we have general motors american airlines and um brands i'm going to open them with the daily chart first to speed it up now i'm using real-time data when i am running the webinar on metastock sometimes it takes a while to load it has load this stock america airlines no bullish signal here i can see that the bullish headwind here and here worked very well. The bearish headwind here worked very well. Bullish headwind worked very well. Bullish headwind worked very well. That is why we take the bullish and bearish headwinds very seriously. We may use them to take a reversal trade. At minimum, if we had a trade in the opposite direction, we protect the position with trailing stop. They worked very, very well and the trade setup also works very well the headwind trade setup. right now there is no trade setup general motors inside a triangle pattern no trade setup and this was um brands this is looking interesting there is no trade setup right now looking at the daily let me open it up with weekly daily the at a glance template this is looking interesting it is not giving me any trade setup if i apply the standard trade setup checklist we have four standard trade setups you may find more detail about them from the books books are available from the sagarnandi.com book menu why it is interesting still because it is bouncing up from the memory support in daily and weekly both and it has displayed a bull release signal with heavy pressure and u-turn as well volume was very high yesterday and previously during the down move volume was very high as well one might consider taking an exertion based reversal trade yesterday as price was trying to go up one might take the trade using early range breakout technique let me switch to the fine tune real time chart to see if such a setup was possible yesterday such a setup would be possible if the early range was narrow enough taking time to load the data okay yesterday market opened at this point then early range high and low lines form as price went above early range high one could take a long trade for that day yesterday the stop would be just below early range low and then it closed higher it was not intended to be a day trade it was a swing trade but precisely entered using the early range breakout technique for the entry day the stop would be just opposite end of the early range and now that it closed higher now the stop will be shifted using the daily chart that is it will be just below the recent low in the daily chart you may put it just below the memory support line. Let me close this. Back to trade finder, delete these stocks. Now let me look at breakouts. 
one, two, three, four, five. Five stocks broke out yesterday. Let me look at them using the daily chart. Snap is looking interesting in the daily chart instantly. If you are a breakout trader, then on the daily chart, it has a nice breakout from the memory resistance line and the breakout happened with very high activity. Later on, we will look at it using weekly daily. Let me look at the other stocks first. I will keep Snap in mind. This is also looking nice. Netflix, the, the breakout from memory resistance for bullish trade or memory support for bearish trade. In this case, from memory resistance breakout is a very effective way of taking the long trade well ahead of others. Many people try to take the breakout trade when the pivot is broken from like the IBD 50 technique. However, if you take the trade when the memory resistance is broken, you have much better feel and the stop loss is also nearer. I will look at Netflix using weekly daily later. WMB, it is inside a triangle pattern. Not going to take any trade now. Note, however, how beautifully the bullish headwinds got the very bottom. You could take very profitable trades using the bullish headwind signal. In this case also, I can see this bullish headwind worked very well. This bearish headwind worked very well. This bullish headwind also worked pretty well. Went up for long enough to give a profitable swing trade. All the bullish and bearish headwinds in this chart also gave very profitable trades. They have an uncanny ability to catch the tops and bottoms. Right now it is inside a triangle, so I'm not going to look for a trade setup here. HYG, let me try to refresh the data. HYG, it is too close to the upper boundary, so I'm not going to look for a trade. CX, this also looks promising because it was in a downtrend for a long time. Now it has come to the upper boundary. However, I mentioned that when a stock is reversing from downtrend to uptrend, when the first go with flow trade setup comes, it is expected to add or even higher than the upper boundary level. So if today it goes up, it will nicely break out of the memory resistance. It will give a cyan color candle, hopefully. That will be the first go with flow trend following long trade setup. And you could put stop just below this point. We look at this also using weekly daily. CX, back to snap. Okay, let me start with CX and look at it using weekly daily. What I'm going to do, I'm going to open the data from local data store. It's looking good in daily. In weekly, there is a memory resistance. If the memory resistance in weekly is also broken, then one may consider taking a long trend, putting stop just at this point. What about snap? This is looking even better because the weekly is bullish. Daily is also bullish, broke out. It gave a possible go with flow not go with flow, strictly speaking. Why I'm not calling it go with flow setup? Because it is not in an uptrend, still in a downtrend, but it broke out of memory resistance. It can be taken as a breakout trend. However, I am always extra careful when my 
I put my money at risk. There is another memory resistance nearby. Looking at that, I'm not going to take this trade. CX, if I go back to CX, if this memory resistance is broken, the next memory resistance is far away. We will have much bigger potential profit than the potential risk. So CX is one I am happier to take if it breaks above the weekly daily memory both. Then there was Netflix. Okay, so between these three stocks in terms of daily chart, Netflix is most promising because here the stop loss is the narrowest. It is breaking out of the memory resistance. It's not a trend following trade, it's a breakout trade. However, the weekly is not cyan yet unlike the other two stocks cx and snap that is expected because it was in a downtrend and just now starting to go up if you are following netflix and you are confident about it and the fact it came to the came close to the weekly memory support i would be happier if it touched the memory support and bounce stock from there. That didn't happen, but still it is looking interesting for a breakout candidate. Let me look at CX and Netflix using the peer analysis tool to check if fundamentally they are strong enough for us to consider a long trend. Let me start with Netflix. using Netflix as a root stock, comparing it with its industry peers. More data is stored in my computer, connecting with Refinitiv Zenith to get the data, collect the peers, and then finally calculate the statistics. Server side errors, it's an error from Refinitiv, just pause and play again. It belongs to movies and entertainment industry. Let me look at the industry first. Entertainment movies and edit. this industry is looking good. It was weaker earlier, science score. Now it is becoming, sorry, what am I saying? It was weaker earlier, magenta score. Now it is becoming stronger. Score is also improving. I just look at the color. So we may consider taking a long trade and you saw Netflix was down earlier. That is in sync with the fact that the industry was weaker earlier. They are in sync. So the industry is telling we are okay to take a long trade. Looking at the fundamental scorecard, it's not undervalued, but that is fine. If we have solid earnings growth, I see the latest quarter, earnings growth is negative. That is what probably led to a drop in the stock. However, over yearly period, it has very robust earnings growth over three year, two year, as well as one year, compound aggregate earnings growth, very robust. And we have robust revenue growth, both in the quarterly as well as the yearly periods. It has a short squeeze potential as well. Steadily going up over 10 day, five days, two day, one day periods. So you may consider taking a breakout long trade in Netflix, very low risk trade in a stock has significant revenue growth, earnings growth over the yearly periods at least. And the industry is also improving. So Netflix is one such stock. Let me look at the other stock, CX. Was it CX.O? Stock not found. Let me check the stock. Just CX, okay. CMAX belongs to construction materials while it is retrieving peer data. Let's look at the industry. Industry was 
stronger earlier, then we can start to improve. We may consider taking a long trade because of the improvement from five day to two day to one day. Because we are talking about swing trading, we are not going to be affected by very, very far back score. What happened five months ago? We want to know what happened in the recent few days for swing trading. And we can see from five day to two day to one day, the construction materials industry is improving. Industry is saying it's okay. Probably not the best industry, but it is still okay considering that the score is improving. What about the fundamentals? Here the fundamentals are looking much better. Undervalued stock also has a short squeeze potential. Undervalued stock, I don't expect very high earnings growth. So it's okay to find that earnings growth is not positive in the last year or quarterly period. Revenue is also not good. That's fine. In terms of fundamentals, I'm looking for either undervalued stock or high earnings growth. Here we have an undervalued stock, so it is okay to look for a buy setup. So both CX as well as Netflix may be buy candidates. Let's look at them side by side now. Sometimes if we have two candidates, it helps to look at them side by side. First, let us look at them using weekly chart. change one of them to Netflix. See the difference between the two stocks and compare that with the fundamentals. CX is in a downtrend, very much down, and we expect it to be undervalued, not high growth stock. That is what we saw from the fundamental peer analysis. It is an undervalued stock, not a high growth stock, but undervalued. So it, we are okay to look for a buy setup. Whereas Netflix over longer term weekly period, it is going up in an uptrend, clear uptrend, pull back to support now going up. And we don't expect such a stock to be undervalued, but we expect it to have good earnings growth. That is true for Netflix. It had some drop recently, we saw the latest quarterly result, negative earnings growth that might have led to some drop. This may be a good point to consider buying the stock again. Let's look at the two stocks using daily charts. Entry daily. In terms of the daily charts, we see both of them are giving attractive breakout setups. And it is trying to connect to definitive. I have to wait for the pop-up to finish. I should have connected and made it offline anyway. In terms of the daily charts, which one is more appealing to you? More appealing to me because it is nicely breaking out and the relative performance is what is making it more appealing to me. It is outperforming the market for longer period and considerably outperforming the relative performance sharply tilting up. Whereas Netflix is a different kind of setup where it was weak, underperforming the market, just now starting to outperform. In terms of daily chart, to me, CX is looking 
more appealing looking at the right edge because of the bullish candle shape yesterday long hollow candle and the fact that relative performance is sharply going up considering everything if both of them goes up today i would prefer to take a long in cx that is my personal preference sometimes people follow high growth stocks and for them cx will not be the right candidate netflix may be a better choice for them that is how i carry out the 360 degrees analysis as i call it look at the stocks technicals fundamentals as well as industry strength to look for trade setup let me finish today's session here thank you for attending i look forward to seeing you in my next session remember today at 2 pm there is an important event central bank rate announcement you may avoid taking new trades before that have a great week and trade profitably